How's it going, boys and girls? My name is Michael SK, and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. So in the last episode, uh, I'm pretty sure nothing too crazy happened except the game of fucking Risk. Hell yeah, dude. Um, basically, Misha and Shizune were trying to get us to join the student council. However, we didn't want any of that shit. Fuck the student council. That's that's just responsibilities that no one, or at least that we don't have time for. So we'll jump in here. I think we're going to the library. I think that's what's going on here. So let us resume. One flight of stairs up, and I run into problems. The second floor hallway is a carbon copy of the third floor one. Wide, of course, and plain, like only hallways can be. The problem is that the library's whereabouts are not as easily determined as one would think. The classrooms are marked with signs stating which class they belong to, but then there is a plethora of other unmarked rooms. Is the library one of them? Or is it just somewhere down the hallway? I bet on the latter and choose my direction at random. After I turn around the corner, an unmarked door draws my attention because it's not closed. It's not open either, though. Just barely ajar so that I can see it's open and nothing else. It would make sense for the library door to be invitingly open, and while this one is not quite that, it's good enough. Eh, why not? We're, we're, we're gonna have to, you know, take a risk here. We're gonna have to gamble to figure out where the fuck we're going. At the very least, it means that someone's, someone is inside, and I can ask for directions no matter how embarrassing that is. It's not embarrassing. We're a new student. I mean... What do people expect of us? I gingerly push on the center of the door with my fingertips, every muscle in my arm ready to pull back at a moment's notice. Now that would be embarrassing. The feeling of being an outsider to this school can't be shaken from my mind, so much so that I instinctively fear doing something wrong by entering. Alright. The door slowly creaks as if groaning from a deep sleep though it was much easier to open than I had anticipated. Leaning over and poking my head even further inside to gain sight of the room as fast as possible, the meek hello on my lips is quickly snatched away. Oh shit! A blonde-haired female! This is... not as I was expecting. I mindlessly let the door open to its full extent, taking in the sight of the solitary figure taking center stage in the otherwise abandoned room. So I guess it's not the library, we failed that one. The situation steals my voice, leaving me standing at the doorway, staring at this beautiful girl. Evidently having taken her time to assess the situation, the girl gently puts down her teacup and opens her eyes, but doesn't look at me. Hello there. May I help you? Hmm... I have an idea of what's wrong with this character. Staring directly in front of herself, the movements of her lips seem to break the silence rather than the words. However, it's the soft, measured voice that reminds me she's a being separate from the room itself. Not only is she likely the tallest girl I've ever laid eyes on, but even among the foreigners I've met, she's strikingly distinct. Uh, hi, sorry for intruding, I was just, uh, kind of lost. She takes a moment to formulate a response before speaking. Every action she takes feels as if it's carefully choreographed beforehand. Care to take a seat? Oh, damn. Listen to this music. The soundtrack really is something else, guys. This is, this is nice. Unexpected, considering that I'm intruding upon her... Um, thanks. I slowly step towards another seat opposite her, the girl resting the teacup and saucer on the wooden table in between. The way she doesn't track my movements with her head is telling that the slight cloudiness to her eyes means she must be at least partially blind, like Kenji. I guess that explains why Kenji got really fucking close to us. Come to think of it, her voice doesn't have any detectable accent either. I guess she must be half Japanese. As I take my seat, her composure takes me slightly off guard. Her air of relaxed confidence makes the silence entirely comfortable. The calming atmosphere is so very different from the student council office. 
I take it you're a new student to Yamaku? Uh, yeah. I just transferred in yesterday. I get the distinct feeling my speech patterns don't match the formality of hers, accentuated by her restrained bow of greeting. One which I haste, I hasten, hasten, what the fuck am I saying, to match before realizing the futility of the action. I'm Lily Satuo. I feel like I said something wrong there. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Sato. Let's go with that. I, th I think that is the correct way to say that. Isao. Isao Nakai. She gives a nod before gesturing roughly in the direction of her teacup. I'm sorry, guys, alright? I only speak English, and barely at that. So, when it comes to speaking Japanese names, it's not exactly easy. So, please, forgive me. <clears throat> she gives a nod before gesturing roughly in the direction of her teacup. Would you care for a drink? Sure. As much as it pains me, I can't keep step with her formality in the proceedings. She gives a kind nod, taking the request in stride. Without another word, she steps off the chair and prepares a second cup of tea from a collection of supplies laid out along a shelf. A brush here, a brush there, her left hand often lightly touching the side of whichever container she's pouring into. It seems to be a process she's followed dozens of times before. As I lean sideways to see around her back, she seems to use her long, dainty finger to measure the right amount of water in the cup. It's one thing to see the different disabilities the students in my class have, but it's quite another to see how everyone seems to adapt. Shizune and Misha have no problem working together to communicate to me, and Lily herself seems to have workarounds for problems I'd never thought of. While I feel slightly guilty about her doing the work, she seems pleased to be, to be following the correct process of the offerer preparing the drink. So, her soft voice brings me out of my silent observance. Which room were you looking for? It's not often this classroom is visited after school. The school library. Shizune and- uh, I mean some classmates told me it was on this floor. She finishes pouring water into the teacup as she nods, a small metallic tapping coming from the teacup indicating it being stirred. I'm aware of Miss Hama Hakamichi, sorry, as are most students. To be with them means you're in class 3-3, no? That's right, in the science room with Muto. She gives a small giggle before setting down the teaspoon and slowly walking towards the table, teacup and saucer in hand. He's quite a character. I imagine you'll come to like him, most do. Oh man, look at look at this scene! We actually get to see uh, the main character here. I mean, we only saw him one other time, so I guess this is a uh, a nice uh, a nice view. As she sets down the tea, I gently take it and have a sip. I'm really more of a coffee person, but this seems like a rather bad moment to bring it up. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Nonetheless, the smell's quite nice. I hardly think it'd be hard to choke down. Thanks, Satuo. It tastes really nice. I feel like I had said that wrong again. <laughs> she smiles and quickly waves her hand in front of her face. Lily, please. There's no need to be formal. Thank God! That's a much easier name to say. She says this in spite of her exceedingly well-bred speech. Oh well. I guess I should try and ask her about herself as it really does seem as if she's catering to me. So which class are you from? I imagine it's one of the third year classes. Correct. I'm in class 3-2, which is on the third floor, same as yours. It's taught by Miyagi, and is specifically for both blind and partially blind students. I see. Uh, I mean, uh, sorry. I feel like slapping myself for the fa pa Fa pas what whatever the hell. Looking at her face, though she doesn't seem in the least bit put off by it. My my, there's no need to change your speech on my account. Uh sure. Sorry, I guess I'm really showing my newness here. An environment like this would be a big change, so I can't fault you for it. While the same can't be said for everyone, many have come to terms with their conditions. A category which would include her, it seems, all too ready to jump ship from this particular topic I see into another. Do you come here to drink tea often? It's a really nice place. 
Thinking on it, this might be her version of the place behind my school that I like to have lunch at. I come here fairly often during lunch times. My duties as class representative don't leave enough time for an official club, so a friend and I use this room for having tea. Class representative, huh? Yet another class rep. <clears throat> Compared to Shizune, her mannerisms seem to be almost completely opposite. While Shizune is blunt and fiercely driven, Lily seems relaxed and calm, almost aloof. Come to think of it, she might be useful for a less biased view of the school's clubs. What kinds of clubs are there to join? Hmm. The more popular ones are the track and field club, which uses the field near the school during lunch times, the baseball club, and the book club in a room near the library. There are also numerous small ones too, though, such as the art and music clubs. At a time when I'm just wanting to get on my feet, rushing into a club right away seems slightly unappealing. I wonder if the school shares the same rule as my old one. Is it compulsory to join a club? It isn't, though it is encouraged. I would hate to be at a high school, college, whatever the hell, some sort of uh, institution for learning. Uh, I would hate to be there if there was some sort of uh, requirement for you to join a group or a club. That would absolutely suck. I, f I would feel like I'm losing a bit of my freedom. Uh, <laughs> good. That's a relief. I've really let my guard down around this girl to let such a thing slip out. The fact seems to slightly amuse her. Not wanting, to, not wanting my tea to get cold, I finally start drinking it as Lily does the same. Oh shit, it got late. As I look over to the window over her shoulder, yeah, this is some nice music. <laughs> this is cheerful. I notice the light coming into the room has a distinctly orange tint. Even here, time doesn't stand still. Huh. Time's gone quickly. Sorry? Right. She's blind. Of course, she can't see the sun setting. It just looks like the sun's starting to set. It seems to come as a surprise for her. I guess she must have lost track of the time. Sorry, Hisao. I didn't mean to keep you from the library for so long. I quickly move to allay her concern. Uh, no, it's okay. The library's still open, isn't it? She pauses and takes a moment to think on it. It's probably something I should have asked Shizune when I had the chance, but Lily seems likely to know in any case. True, it's open until 6.30 during weekdays. A quick glance at my watch confirms I have well enough time to get there. Hmm, I might get going in that case. It's been nice talking with you, Lily. She smiles and gives a deep nod, her hands still neatly folded on the table in front of her. It was my pleasure. Oh, come to think of it, shall I show you to where the library is? Man, we're going to have a blind person show us where the library is. That's incredible. I feel like I said that in a really rude tone. <laughs> my bad. I couldn't possibly ask for more help. I should be able to find it alright. Well, unless my navigational skills fail me. Which they seem to have a habit of doing. It's alright. I was going to be talking to the librarian there in any case. I could introduce you. This gets better and better. It's pretty hard to deny her offer. If you're sure, then that'd be great. Thanks. As she stands up to follow me, she takes hold of a straight, retractable cane that had been slipped in the middle of her bag on the floor. Compared to the cane the boy in my class had, Lily's looks much thinner and longer. His must be for support, whereas Lily's is for navigation. Together, we leave the peaceful room and enter the empty hallway on the way to the library. I take it that the room that they were in wasn't a classroom, but sort of like a study room or something like that. I, I really don't know. Side by side, my pace carefully slowed to match hers, we slowly walk through the hallway. It doesn't take long for us to arrive at the door to the warm-looking room, apparently situated in the center of the floor rather than either wing. Ladies first. She gives an appreciative smile at the gesture, taking the lead as we file in. Ooh, now this looks like a library. A regular high school library. Trust me. To the left is the wooden library counter, with the library pro proper being on the right. 
It easily dwarfs my old school's library with the distinct smell of old books giving the place an almost old world air. There doesn't seem to be a lot of students here considering the time. It isn't a big surprise. Everyone's probably either in the school grounds or the dorms. Yuko, are you here? She says it to thin air since the librarian doesn't seem to be present and of course Lily can't see this. What's unexpected is that it draws a reaction. Something from under the counter thuds against it, followed by a quiet wail. Ugh. Oh shit, that's our librarian! Damn, dude! <laughs> I'm not saying that for any particular reason. The origin? Apparently the librarian quickly crawls out and bounces up to extremely rigid attention. Hi, Lily. How can I help you? Her voice is strained in a failing attempt to sound casual, and she's rubbing the back of her head. Good afternoon. What happened just now? I heard a strange sound. It's nothing. I just hit my head. See, I dropped an eraser under my desk, and I, while I was looking for it, a, a pencil dropped. And when I was looking for both of them, you came and surprised me. Are you alright? I'm sorry, I couldn't know. It's okay, it's okay, sorry for making you worry. This is nothing, I've had worse happen to me. She's quick to reverse Lily's apologies, almost frantically trying to push aside the possibility that she, that she could be in any way inconvenienced by bashing her head on the counter. Yes, worse things have happened. <laughs> Uh, the girl fidgets with her fingers as Lily doesn't seem to drop her concerned expression, and then she shuffles some papers around the counter for no reason. A little shorter than Lily, replete with glasses, freckles, and a very troubled look, she seems to fit a library perfectly. Ah, uh, Lily, did you get my message? Message... hmm... Oh, the two imported books that arrived. Right, right! They finally came! I can't believe it took so long, but... Admits her celebrations, partially from managing to change the topic, I'm sure, she notices me from the corner of her eye and freezes on the spot when she does. Uh, oh no! I'm sorry for not noticing you before. Did you need to check out a book? Or return one? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The way she can so qu quickly shift between moods is a little unsettling. <clears throat> He's with me, Yuko. This is Hisai, a new student. Hisao? Wait, did I say Isai? Isao! Fuck! Isao, this is Yuko, the school's librarian. Sorry, guys, I'm, I am absolutely out of it today, and I'll explain why later. Pleased to meet you. Isao! Right, Isao. Pleased to meet you, too, Isao. For a second, she visibly attempts to engrave the name on her mind so she won't forget. Yuko often arranges to import foreign books in Braille for me. Would you like to tell Hisao a little something about the library? Lily's innocent suggestion is met with an expression of abject terror. Uh, I... Please, Lily, I can't. I don't know what he could be interested in. This is too much responsibility. How it's any responsibility at all, I don't get. But her objection is so sincere, I don't doubt for a second that she would rather disembowel herself on the spot than tell me where the light novels are. But... So, there are a lot of books in Braille here. I attempt to save the day by asking the first thing that pops into my head. It seems to work at least partially, as Yuko seems to... Not exactly relax, but at least look slightly less tense. Well, I think about a third or a fourth of Yamaku's library is either in Braille or audio. Makes sense, given all the blind students that'd be here. If it's only that, how come this library is so big in the first place? Uh, well, we get a lot of new books regularly because the library is adequately endowed. That's probably why. They spend more on new books than on my salary, and then I have to organize and shelve all of them. It's so troublesome, and they weigh so much. I wish I could quit this job. Man, she is definitely really honest. A very awkward silence follows this revelation of too much information. Uh, I'll go check the aisles then, if you don't mind. It's probably best for all of us if she doesn't keep talking to me. Very well. Meanwhile, Yuko, I would have those books if it's alright with you. 
<clears throat> I guess time to go explore on our own. My first impression was right. The library is surprisingly big. Ambling down the narrow aisles, I study the spines of the books in random order, occasionally sliding one out to read the blurb, taking it with me if it looks good. In a few moments, I have a respectable stack of books in my arms. I guess I'll never be stuck for choice in here. The normality of the library sinks in. Sure, there are large print and braille books scattered throughout, but it is what it is. A library. It's as if the calm mood from the room I had tea with Lily in snuck with us in here, unless it was here to begin with. Something about that puts me at ease, just like before. I reach the end of the aisle and find a collection of desks, set up for study or personal reading. Going a little further, though, I discover a nice quiet corner at the back. While the rest of the library has the odd student sitting at a desk either reading or stealthily sleeping, the back is pretty much deserted. Hey, that's how it is at college. Yep, and it's not even stealthy. Jesus Christ. You see a lot of people in, in the library at my college just right then and there, just asleep. As I glance around, I see someone who I recognize sitting on one of the several beanbags. Oh shit, it's her! It's the dark-haired girl from my class, the one who snuck out of the classroom earlier. She's reading a book, keeping it close to her face, which makes her look like she's really into it. From the way she was acting today, I had her pegged as more of a delinquent than a bookworm. In fact, her mysterious disappearance from the class raises all sorts of whys in my mind. Or my head. Same thing. Intrigue floats slowly but surely towards the surface, and before I know it, I'm walking towards the mysterious long-haired girl. I guess there's no harm in introducing myself as I would with anyone else. She's a classmate, after all. Walking over to another beanbag, I take a seat and lay my books beside it. The girl starts looking scaredly up at me from underneath her fringe. This is the first time I've seen her this close. Underneath her long, dense bangs, I can see that part of her face. At least a third, if not a half. It's pretty badly scarred. My eyes are immediately drawn to the scars, subconsciously peeking past her hair until they meet her own eyes. Oh, I thought she only had one. For a second, I am shocked and divert my eyes to the book in her hands before I realize that looking away probably only makes it worse. It takes too many seconds to collect myself and remember what I walked up to her for. Uh, we can either say, I'm sorry I didn't mean to startle you, or hi, I'm new here, Hisao Nikai. We're in the same class. Hmm. Let's save it first, because saving is, is always a great thing. And then we'll uh, save a new slate, because I'm, or state, or whatever, because I'm all about, you know, the, the cautious life. Uh, I guess we should... Hmm. Yeah, we we kind of did startle her. Let's let's say let's say we're sorry. Let's let's just let's apologize a little bit here. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. It it's okay. The girl certainly doesn't look like it's okay, but I let it slide. So um, do you mind if I sit here? She seems to be very uncertain whether it's okay or not for me to sit, but finally she nods just a little. Okay. Ooh, a shy one. Hmm. I take the seat next to her, and she hides herself behind her book. If she actually is so shy, eh, I can see why. It's it's pretty fucking obvious. Life of pi- Life of pie? Oh my god! Oh, there's so much reality in this visual novel. I love it. The book pissed me off. The movie pissed me off more because it wasn't as good as the book. And the book was confusing as hell. But, wow. Man, this, this, is, this is a great visual novel. So, uh... Sorry for... Or sorry again for startling you. I'm Hisao. She looks up from her book, stalling a little before replying. I... know. We... are in the same... same class. Her speech is stilted and so quiet that it is barely audible even in the still library. Somehow I think that my delinquent impression of her was wrong. Yeah, I think it was. H-H- Hanako. I'm... Hanako. I resist the urge to say, that's a nice name. 
just to have something to say, but really, that's the only thing I can think of. I feel like an idiot. Everyone here must be used to being different to each other, and here I am, being all bothered and fussed about that kind of thing. Don't let me interrupt your reading. I'll just check these books, if you don't mind. She nods a little, and sighs a little sigh of relief. So I try to read the covers and the introductions of the books I picked up, and she buries her face in her book. You know what, I think we're actually going to stop here, because we are almost out of time. Uh... But I think it's overall best if I just stop speaking, as I'm uh, not feeling that well. I um, the the reason why this has been a uh, a difficult session and all that is because I visited the dentist after years of avoiding it, and uh, yeah, it it wasn't it wasn't a fun time, and it was a painful time. I'm I'm not feeling that well after everything that was done to my fucking mouth. So, I knew doing this recording session was going to be very difficult, but I'm glad I made it to at least this far, and I hope that the session wasn't as bad, but, yeah, everything's great with my teeth, I'm, I'm getting those worked on, and I will continue to as time goes on, but that's not important, I'm okay, I just really wish I recorded before I went to the dentist, next time I will do that, but... Whatever. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Kadawa Shoujo. If you did, I ask that you leave a like, show your support in that way, and subscribe. Another great way to show support and also to stay up to date with what I am uploading. So, thank you again, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>